restructure the lining of the bacteria in your gut. And with that, you'll start to see not only a weight loss, but a reduction in total body inflammation and reduced toxins. Welcome to the Health Quest Podcast, your guide to God's will for good health. Hello, my name is Dr. Sal, and I've been a practicing surgeon for over 30 years. And my goal for each episode is that you'll be able to have your mind transformed to God's design for good health and lifestyle change. If you're new here, we release a new episode every week. And if you enjoy the content, would you leave us a good review? It helps our ratings and allows us to show and reach more people and in turn, help them with their lifestyle change. On today's episode, we'll be talking about the gut and the microbiome or bacteria of the gut. So let's dive right in on today's health quest. So the gut microbiome, obesity, and metabolic dysfunction. In the past previous podcast, we talked about the prevalence of obesity and its associated disorders of other organ systems. We reviewed uh, how the human fat cell or adipocyte is more than just a place to store excess fat and energy and uh, keeping us warm. Intense research in the past two decades have shown that the fat cell is involved with the immune system, hormones, and metabolism of the human body. Today's podcast, we're gonna delve into the other prominent player affiliated with the perpetual cause of obesity, and that is the gut. Because the human intestine harbors about 10 to 14 trillion bacteria and there's about 1,100 species of bacteria that live in the gut lining. For the most part, each individual has about 160 of these uh, species. And the microbiome drives the development of mucosal and systemic immune system and controls the regeneration of the intestinal lining. What does that mean? So the ratio of good versus bad bacteria helps to maintain a healthy immune system and keeps the lining of our intestines intact. That becomes very important, um, especially to our health, because if your immune system is off balance, uh, you get something like a COVID virus, you can go into cytokine storm because of an imbalanced immune system and it can lead or it can succumb to death. And by having a leaky gut is where a lot of these toxins gets in and you have a bunch of allergies to a bunch of foods that are really unnecessary. So studies have uncovered a profound change in the composition and metabolic function of the gut in obese individuals. So the, the problem is, is that the obese microbiota, which means the, the gut bacteria of obese patients have a tendency to extract more energy from the foods that we eat. And so the gut microbiota interacts with the host uh, cells or the lining of the, of the intestines and that indirectly controls the energy expenditure in the storage. So changes again in the ratios of the germs or the bacteria in the gut play an important role in health. So the question is, is do I have more good versus bad? Well, we found out that the, uh, the gut community of lean people have more species versus obese individuals that have less diverse and dysfunctional uh, bacteria. So we're going to go over three studies that kind of support these ideas. And one of them was uh, by Dr. Jeffrey Gordon, who published an article in 2013 out of Washington University in St. Louis. And what he did is he conducted the famous twin study. And what he did is he took the microbes from an obese woman, and then they took the microbes out of her lean twin sister. So you got these two women who are twins. One is overweight and the other one is lean. And they took the bacteria from their gut lining, and then they infused uh, these bacteria into the lining of germ-free mice. These were mice that were genetically designed not to have any germs in their body. So they would put the bacteria 
from the lean uh, twin in one set of mice that had no germs at all. And then the bacteria from the obese woman and her bacteria went into the germ-free mice of another set of uh, uh, mice. And so these mice then ate the same diet. Um, and what they noticed is that the mice with the bacteria from the obese twin were actually much larger and became overweight versus the mice with the bacteria from the lean twin, twin sister were nor, of normal weight. So there is a cause and effect relationship and it is possible to prevent the development of obesity. And of course, it goes back to what you eat. Remember what you eat will affect a different type of bacteria. Remember, high fibrous foods are what we call prebiotics and those feed the good bacteria in your gut lining. Eating processed foods, high sugary foods in particular, build up the bad bacteria, which then cause destruction to the lining of the intestines, allowing toxins to get into our body. A second study was done out of Harvard by Dr. Filippo in 2010, which was published in the Procedures of National Academy of Science. And what they did is they compared the Western uh, population to a group of rural Africans, uh, particularly with uh, young children. And the reason why they did that is because obesity or being overweight is virtually unheard of in the rural sub-Saharan African uh, areas of Africa. Some of this discrepancy is due to there's less access to food and um, it also revolves around the composition of the gut. At least that's what they hypothesized. So the study looked at the effect of the diet and the microbiome of children in rural Africa. And of course, these kids eat a higher fiber diet with polysaccharides and they consume less sugar. Uh, they studied the bacteria in the kids' fecal matter and they found out that these gut bacteria from these children produced a higher level of what is known as short chain fatty acids, which actually uh, reduces excessive fat storage. There's also a lot of other benefits to these uh, short chain fatty acids, and that also is, is um, to protect the gut lining. What also they discovered is that there's two large groups of bacteria. There's bacteroidetes, which are gram negative. Uh, that's, a, that's a scientific term, and firmicutes. These two make up about 90% of the gut population. Now, the ratio between these two determines the level of inflammation related to the conditions we mentioned in our pre, uh, previous podcast. So the firmicutes uh, are exceptionally adept at extracting calories from food. So they're, this bacteria, the more calories that it can extract from the foods, then they increase caloric absorption. And so the more calories you absorb, the greater likelihood uh, you are of gaining weight. And so they are known to be abundant in overweight humans. And obese individuals have about an average of 20% more uh, firmicutes compared to normal weight individuals. And 90% of obese individuals had fewer bacteroidetes, which helped to regulate human metabolic genes uh, by controlling the genes that er adversely impact uh, metabolism. In other words, uh, the firmicutes can hijack your, uh, our DNA. So they, they stimulate the DNA that produces a lot of these cytokines or abnormal pro-inflammatory molecules that we talked about in our previous uh, podcast. So an imbalance in the gut microbiota can lead to inflammatory diseases. Again, we compared this uh, study of these children from rural Africa compared to the Western diet of the children um, in places uh, particularly like the United States. Again, this can be changed by increasing dietary fiber. Fiber are known as the prebiotics, which help um, support the buildup of good bacteria, which then prevents you from breaking down your gut lining, causing other problems like food allergies and increasing your weight. Um, again, you could um, alter uh, the ratio. Uh, the bacteroidetes, on the other hand, specialize in breaking down bulky plant starches and fibers, 
into these short chain fatty acids, which are molecules that the body can use for energy. So now they're using the uh, Firmicutes to bacteroidetes ratio as an obesity marker. So when they test these bacteria, if you have more Firmicutes uh, to bacteroidetes and you're still lean, the chances are that over time you're gonna start putting on more weight. So improving the gut bacteria helps to reduce obesity and that comes from, again, eating more high fiber type foods. Now, getting back to how the gut bacteria affects us, there was another uh, research study that was done out of MIT and Aristotle University in Greece that was published in 2013 in uh, plus one uh, scientific journal, that's PLOS1. And what they did is they examined mice that were genetically predisposed to obesity. They had them eat an equivalent Western fast food diet, and uh, that includes unhealthy fats, increased sugar, low fiber, and vitamin deficient in the B-complex vitamins and vitamin D. They noticed that um, these mice that ate this kind of diet, they quickly became obese. And so the Western diet of fast food and processed food will restructure your gut bacteria, okay? So what you eat can restructure that gut bacteria, which in turn then becomes a problem for your overall health. There was another group that ate the same diet. Now these are mice that ate the same diet, but then they consumed probiotic uh, yogurt and they remained lean. So probiotic yogurt, especially with purified lactobacillus ruteri, that's R-E-U-T-E-R-I. This particular bacteria um, you can get from a good yogurt product with no fruits uh, because they do that and they add sugars to it. You just have to have plain yogurt or you can get it out of a good probiotic which you could take. Uh, and that was sufficient enough to change the pro-inflammatory immune profile and prevent abdominal fat pathology um, um, as we see in an age-associated weight gain. But now, I don't want you to get the impression that you can continue eating a bad diet and eat yogurt and you're going to be okay because I suggest what God wants you to do and that's really change your overall lifestyle. That's where I always say the paleo diet was God's diet because uh, not, you know, a lot of people think, oh, the paleo diet, that's a high protein diet. Well, because you're eating uh, a lot of proteins, whether in the form of fish, birds, or even meat, but there's a lot of vegetables that you can eat on that diet. And when I was, I still do that diet, I'll still consume a minimum of four vegetables a day, four different vegetables. Uh, I can sometimes uh, step that up to six types of vegetables. And when I want to lose a little bit of weight, then what I do is I cut back on my protein and I increase my, my vegetable intake. Um, if you do that with some plain yogurt two to three times per week, or you could take a probiotic that has the, uh, the lactobacillus ruteri, uh, that's going to help you reduce your weight. Clear up that gut lining, restructure it, get it so it's solid, so it reduces the absorption of toxins and allergens restructure the lining of the bacteria in your gut and with that you'll start to see not only a weight loss but a reduction in total body inflammation and reduced toxins also eating a lot of these uh, fibrous foods uh, also helps to clean out the the body and um, can be a way of detoxing your body too as well so we've got three articles that we presented that shows um, how the different gut bacteria that comes from an obese person is different from that of a lean person. Uh, the good bacteria can help you lose weight. Uh, in order to do that, you have to modify your diet by increasing your prebiotics, which are fibrous foods, um, increasing vegetable intake, which is where you're going to get most of your vegetables and your lean proteins and good fats, like your monosaturated fats from avocado and olive oil, uh, your nuts, especially uh, your almonds, your walnuts, your hazelnuts, pistachios, a lot of these contain a lot of minerals as well. Uh, some have some fiber, but they also contain some of the good uh, fats, which also we've shown how some of these gut bacteria produce short fatty acids, 
which are also a benefit to the immune system as well as building the lining of the gut as well. So with that, I hope you enjoyed our show. Thank you for watching us. And if you enjoyed our episode, be sure to leave us a good review and visit our website and social media accounts so that you can connect with us more. If you'd like to see more about uh, the, uh, the sources of our research in each episode, we'll make them available in the show notes and description. Until next time, have a wonderful day and God bless. Thank you.